Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about forgiveness. Who do you need to forgive? Are you able to forgive easily or do you hold on to grudges? Would you like to have peace of mind? Learn how to clear some spiritual clutter as we continue our month focusing on 10-minute decluttering tips. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, Julie Caraccio, on clearing the clutter inside and out, as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. Today's episode was inspired because I think this is something we can all work on. We're all part of the oneness, everything's energy. If we all take the time to work on forgiveness, that is putting out something amazing into earth, the universe, your towns, your homes, cities, everything. I know I can do better with forgiveness. The good news is I'm a lot better than I used to be. However, I'm working on spiraling up more and being able to forgive a lot more easily. This can be a process. It took me years to forgive someone who had harmed me as a kid. If you've been following along in the podcast, it's taken me about six months to work through forgiving my mentor and the group that I used to belong to can be done. Like anything, it's that muscle. Let's get that forgiveness muscle exercising. Let's get it going because the more we do it, the easier it becomes. Here's a great quote if you haven't heard this before, and, and I couldn't find it. It was attributed to a couple different people, so I'm not sure who it belongs to, but here it is. Not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. That's a really profound quote if you think about it, because it is, it affects you. What others do and say is about them, how you respond is about you. So let's take care of you, because when you forgive, I believe everyone benefits, but it really, it benefits you. I'm going to encourage you to try and forgive one person this week. Really easy assignment, guys. We can do this. If this is really challenging for you, have it be a stranger, like someone who cuts you off in traffic or cuts the line. If you feel like, you know what, I'm pretty comfortable with forgiving, I challenge you to work on forgiving someone who challenges you, annoys you. Someone that's not easy to forgive. How do we forgive? There are different ways you can work on forgiving. Get present. What the person did to you is in the past. What action can you take right now to move forward? Maybe you never fully expressed to the person how they hurt you. Maybe you never fully acknowledged your emotions. Take that action now to move forward. Get a larger perspective. Having a spiritual practice has helped me immensely. Some people are here to teach you. They have certain parts to play in your life. Maybe you played a part for them in another life for another timeline. Maybe you have some karma to clear up. That might be weird for some of you, but for some of you, it may help. I'm working with this guy named Matt Andrews. I interviewed Matt a couple years ago. He's awesome. He does something called light language, and he really got to the point quickly with me. He said, you're not a victim here. Your mentor gave you a gift by teaching you to own your truth, to come into your power. When you own your truth and own what is right for you and make those decisions, 
that empowers you instead of having teacher worship. And you know what? He's right. And that helped get me out of being a victim. When you forgive someone, that supports you in getting out of feeling and acting like a victim. What can you learn? Kind of with having that larger perspective. I believe I create my reality. What can not forgiving this person teach you? What can you better understand about yourself? I had to understand, sadly at my age, that I was allowing others to have too much influence over me. I shouldn't be embarrassed, part of me is, but I now realize it and I've made changes. Have a spiritual practice. Reconnecting to my spiritual practice many times helps me see that most stuff is really not a big deal. Someone cut you off in traffic, or you can remember that for 10 years from now. And you can forgive the big stuff. I've forgiven big stuff. I remember seeing ages ago a woman on Oprah who was able to forgive a man who had killed her. It was son or daughter, and I believe he was a drunk driver. I couldn't even imagine that at the time. I, I couldn't. Now I have a better understanding. I have a better idea. She needed to achieve peace. She needed to forgive him. Breathe. Just breathe. Someone's hurt you, made you angry in the moment. They need to forgive. Just stop. Take a couple deep breaths. Get centered. Do some deep breaths and work on letting go. Surrounded by clutter? Exhausted from the stress and anxiety it creates? Longing for peace of mind? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can assist you. Remember, we're all spiritual beings living in a human body. Someone said to me, how would God see this person? Well, of course God or the universe would love them. Can I rise above my humanness to see that point of view, to see the goodness in everyone, to see that everyone is love. Take responsibility. What part did you have to play? If I'm honest, I wanted to leave my mentor probably about six or seven months before I actually did. I was angry with myself for not doing it. I have to own that. What can you own? I saw this from Wayne Dyer somewhere, and he said, Stop looking for occasions to be offended. I love this. He said to become a person who refuses to be offended. You get to choose whether or not you become offended. Let me say that again. You get to choose whether or not you become offended. Look to social media if you want to find people who are way easily offended. I have a friend that I am convinced looks daily, if not hourly, for how she can be offended. Everyone who posts on her walls has very narrow-minded views like she does. It doesn't matter if we were in agreement with views because I know people on all sides of the spectrum who are narrow-minded. They're right and no one else is, end of story. However, she looks to start fights on other people's walls because it's happened on mine. She doesn't argue well, and she gets down, shut down pretty quickly. Instead of dealing with her pain, she wants to feel anger at others. She doesn't want to forgive. She doesn't want to forgive the husband that cheated on her. That's affecting her. He's moved on. It takes less energy to love and forgive than to hate and be angry. Have gratitude. I really felt I've made incredible strides in forgiving my mentor. One of the things I've done is to find gratitude for her, and this has really helped me. And so when I'm stuck in forgiving someone, I look for the gratitude and how they support me. When someone cuts me off to speed ahead of me, I say, well, they will be the chase car for the cop. 
surround yourself with pink light, golden light, white light, whatever feels good for you. Ask that light to release your forgiveness. I also believe in blowing up someone in a rose. That's what I was taught on my first class I ever took. So the rose is a universal symbol of love. So I put someone in a rose and I blow them up. So I'm doing no harm. And then I return the energy because everything's energy. It's never created or destroyed. And I return that energy to be reused somewhere else in the universe. It really helps me to do something energetic, something physical that's tangible. Send the person unconditional love. Open your heart. My friend Matt that I suggested and I've been working with and mentioned earlier gave me great advice. You know, if you've listened, the neighbors have trash in the yard. And he said, keeps coming to our yard and like, please just pick up trash. I don't, again, I, I don't understand that. But he has given me some great advice that really helps. He said, view them as a toddler. And I have to tell you, as I've started to do this and started to send them unconditional love, it has really tapered down. I believe shifting my energy and focus played a part. Maybe not, but that's what I choose to believe. When he told me to view them as toddlers, that was a really great analogy. You wouldn't get bent out of shape at a toddler, would you? He also likened it to a way to have power. If you have to find power, by not picking up trash, how can I feel anything but sorry for you? How can I not have sympathy for that? To feel so disempowered that being hateful and not picking up trash, that's sad. Maybe thinking of the person as a toddler will help you forgive. The March Awareness Bonus episode from this year, Finding the Golden Nugget, may support you more in finding forgiveness. Take actions. Who do you need to forgive? How can you connect to spirit or your religion to support you in the process? What steps do you need to take to forgive someone? Create a plan to forgive. forgive someone. On our next episode, we're talking about kindness. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, Please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1pm.